but that's okay. I don't care. Face Baldur's? No. Hi, everyone. It's Thursday, and we're back. It's Giselle and Sudani. Um, Ngum can't be with us today, but we'd ask that you please remember her in your prayers um, as she's going, she and her family are going through a bereavement at the moment. So I'm sure she'll be grateful for um, your prayers and support. But um, today we are looking at another woman of the Bible. And today it's a crippled woman. And we're continuing our journey in our study guide, um, the women of the Bible. So if you need details of which study guide we're using, let us know and we can send those to you as well as where you can purchase a copy of it. Um, so today's woman's scriptural reference is Luke 13 verses 10 to 17. So I'm just going to read what is here in our study guides and then Giselle is going to read the Bible passage and then we can open it up for discussion then. Um, so it says here, a crippled woman, um, her role in scripture. The story of the crippled woman is told in just four verses, but it takes many more verses to develop its implications. Now he was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. But when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said to her, Woman, you are loosed from your infirmity. And he laid his hands on her and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. That's in Luke 13, 10 to 13. As far as the woman was concerned, God had met her needs and she praised him. But the ruler of the synagogue was indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath when people were not to work. Jesus was scandalized by this man's insensitivity. He called the man a hypocrite, saying, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound, think of it for 18 years, be loosed from the bond on the Sabbath? That's in Luke 13, verse 16. The Lord's contention with the synagogue official reminds us all to keep human need in clear fo focus. The sufferer, a woman, was a human being. She was a daughter of Abraham, an object of God's love. She was a victim of Satan, who's, who hates humankind. She had suffered for 18 long years. It was only right that God should act to free her from her bondage. Christ's opponents were put to shame. That's seen in Luke chapter 13, verse 17. The phrase doesn't mean that they were ashamed, but that Jesus had publicly exposed their indifference to the need of the people. Their response did not reflect God's command to love one's neighbor, as seen in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. They had used their public commitment to keep every detail of the law as a cloak to disguise their spiritual emptiness, and Jesus had exposed them. The crowds had seen Jews had seen the Jews' legalism, their true nature, contrasted with Christ's compassion for this suffering woman. And the second heading says, an example for today. It says, grace is God's bottom line and compassion is its hallmark. Let's be careful lest we become so righteous that we no longer care for sinners. The second point we can learn is how good it is to know that we can rely on God's grace. Like the healed woman, we are freed by Christ to glorify God. Amen. Amen, Amen. to that. Aren't we just? Mm. And I'm reading uh, from the New Living Translation version of the Bible. Uh, okay. It says in Luke 13, verses 10 to 17, and it's subheaded, Jesus heals on the Sabbath. One Sabbath day, as Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. She had been bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are healed of your sickness. 
Then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight. How she praised and thanked God. But the leader in charge of the synagogue was indignant that Jesus had healed her on the Sabbath day. There are six days of, week, of the week for working, he said to the crowd. Come on those days to be healed, not on the Sabbath. But the Lord replied, you hypocrite. You work on the Sabbath day, don't, don't you untie your ox or your donkey from their stalls on the Sabbath and lead them out for water? Wasn't it necessary for me, even on the Sabbath day, to free this dear woman from the bondage in which Satan had held her for 18 years? This shamed his enemies, and all the people rejoiced at the wonderful things he did. That's brilliant. That, that really, wonderful. That really, really, really is. That is indeed. Oh. And this actually, you know, from the little it said about her in the book that we're following, mm. and only seven verses is that, 10 to 7, mm -hmm. 7 verses. There's a lot of meat to this. Isn't there, Just Kick us oh, off. Is, isn't there really? Oh, there's a lot of meat indeed. And, you know, oh, well, first, I suppose I really stood, uh, uh, you know, the hypocrites. Mm. Just how hypocritical that the Pharisees. And, and even today, there's a lot of religious leaders and religious leaders, not believers, religious leaders that mm. are very, uh, very like this too. And it saddens me that even a lot in what you would call the Protestant faith, Mm -hmm. A lot of people still think that they have to save up and go to Lourdes or go to uh, one of the pilgrimages in Ireland. And I mean, the real Ireland, you down in the Irish Republic, like Connemara or something like that, or over to Holy Islands or something like that, be healed. You can be healed anywhere. Jesus mm -hmm. will meet you where you are. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this woman, she didn't even bless her. She didn't even ask for healing. Like, you just imagine Jesus, can't you, saying her and saying, woman, and I'm, I'm just ushering her over, come here, come here, come here, come here. <laughs> you know, and all of a sudden she's healed. And I was actually really thinking of this woman uh, two weeks ago. Okay. And, um, and I, really, I really was because I had... I was absolutely blessed two weeks ago to baptise a beautiful young woman down in the sea of Loch Ryan here. And it was a gorgeous afternoon. It really was beautiful. And mm. afterwards, there was a little tea party going on uh, because her two children were going to be dedicated. And whilst waiting uh, to get into the hall where the tea party was going to be, mm. um, we had to wait outside. It was a gorgeous day. And there was a pub next door. So we sat down outside the uh, uh, at the outside sitting at the pub and mm. waited to the venue was open and there was a woman walked over to meet her husband and she was literally doubled in two her nose was touching her knees and I ended up talking with them and lovely woman mm. I myself wanted to pray for healing for her but God didn't let in my heart to do it so I didn't do it but mm. I was thinking of this woman and as I say two weeks ago when right. I saw that other later and mm. how, how hard it must have been to go about she went, she went about for uh, 16 years double and two mm. 16 years wow that is a long time mm -hmm. always looking at the ground not being able to look up right mm. and, and and as Jesus said there were hypocrites the uh, uh, the uh, leaders of the synagogue were I mean what do you suppose is there hypocrisy here? Because he's Jesus um is quite firm in the way he rebukes them, isn't he? And what do you suppose is the hypocrisy really? Well, as Jesus said, you know, do you not untie your ox or your donkey and take them for a drink? Is that not considered work? And to be honest with you. As a minister, I try to have my Sabbath on a Saturday mm -hmm. because I work on a Sunday. Right. And mm -hmm. you really, I have come to the conclusion that every day is the Lord's day. Mm 
So if you can take one day a week to have your Sabbath, which just means a day of rest and rest in on God. Mm. Do it whenever you can, because unfortunately, you know, as many people have to work on a Sunday. Mm. Uh, uh, and that's that's just the way it is. But the hypocrisy of them here, the leaders of the synagogue, they were they they had been reading the Torah. So in theory, that was working, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. And it's also to me, it's like they it's one rule for them and, and another rule, well, they expect grace when they're not willing to show grace and compassion. Um mm-hmm. because Jesus says to them that, you know, they work on the Sabbath, they untie their ox and they take it mm-hmm. for a drink. Yep. But in doing so, they expect grace for working on the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Yet they're not willing to extend the same grace to this woman mm-hmm. um, who so desperately needs it because, but because they're so stuck on the letter of the law, they don't have any compassion. I mean, how many times are we are we blinded by righteous anger that we fail to see the human need? Exactly. Um, you know, Jesus Jesus says to them here, or not this woman being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound. Think of it for 18 years, be loosed from the bond, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath. So it's like. Jesus is saying to them, your compassion in God's, in your fellow um, brethren Mm -hmm. in the body of Christ should surpass your need for sticking to legalism, should surpass your need for sticking to the letter of the law. Exactly. And she was one of their congregation. Mm. Mm. And, and And again, that's like modern day today. A lot of churches, especially the larger churches, the congregation's needs aren't generally always being met because there's not, well, yeah, there's there's not really the, um, the the desire to look out for one another, and I I don't think in a large congregation. And mm. again, you see, that makes me think back to quite a few years ago. I I I know a lovely woman. She's in her what late 30s now but when I first met her she was in her uh, late 20s mm. and she'd been christened in a church as a baby she'd been taking to church all her life mm. and she didn't realize until she was 28 that she wasn't saved mm. and the church wow. she was going to was a massive big church there were several thousand uh, attendees but there was there was nobody there that looked after the spiritual needs of the people mm. so Almost at 30, well, tw- 28, uh, almost at 30, she, uh, and it was through a traveling preacher. Mm. She, she realized that she needed to be saved, and hallelujah, she got saved. But, you know, again, so that's what shows me here is that these Pharisees, the religious leaders, in this particular instance, and I think really in a lot of other instances, in it, it's outlined in the Bible, they mm. didn't have the people's best interest at heart. No. No. And it's, you know, our study guide says, as far as the woman was concerned, God had met her needs and she praised him. But the rulers of the synagogue couldn't praise God for her healing because they were so blinded by their self-righteousness, if you want to call it that, um, Mm -hmm. by, you know, their need for wanting to be right with the law that you know the bible tells us that we should rejoice with those who rejoice and mourn with those who mourn and quite clearly they're unable to rejoice with this woman's healing because they're blindsided by their ability or inability to stick to the law and what jesus has done exactly um and isn't that like so many of us today like sometimes people just think they're so stuck on following the letters of the law that we sometimes miss the miracles that are so obviously done by Jesus in front of us yes and so we're not even able to praise 
Jesus for what he's doing because we're so stuck in following the law. Um, and this is a clear example where Jesus is basically saying, your healing or your salvation is by grace. It's not because you can follow the law because these guys, these rulers, by keeping the law, they were breaking the law. Yeah. Mm -hmm. By even though they thought they were keeping the law, they had broken the law because they were also working on the Sabbath. So their keeping of the law couldn't really save them because they'd broken the law in the same breath. Yep. Exactly. So Jesus is basically saying to them, you're not keeping the law and you need grace as much as she needs grace. Hmm. And why shouldn't she receive grace? Big time. Mm. Big time. And another thing it shows you to that this lady bent over 18 years, is it? I said 16 mm -hmm. years, so apologies about eight, 18 years. I'm sure people would have run a mile as soon as they saw her that have run a mile. Didn't want to be anywhere near her. So mm -hmm. possibly considered a total outcast of the area where she lived. Right. And her Jesus calls her out. He picks her out from the crowd. You know, and it's like, yes. you know, that reminds us too of the woman with the issue of blood. Yeah. She was an outcast, wasn't she? She was mm -hmm. confined to her home because she was not allowed out while she was uh, uh, bleeding. And she mm -hmm. was all those years stuck in the house. And she braved it to come out to touch just the hem of Jesus' mm -hmm. garment. And her faith healed her. And this woman, you know, so that woman, the woman with the issue of blood's an outcast too. This crippled lady. It's just a pity she wasn't named, isn't it? You know, it's just... Yeah. It's yeah. just... I mean, this is just so... Like you said, it's just the layers to this are unbelievable because you know jesus is jesus sees this woman and you know i think it says in, in other parts in other miracles that jesus performed as well and you know it says in other other miracles that jesus sees these people and he's moved with compassion mm -hmm. and if we are to be christ-like we should be moved by compassion to the suffering of yeah. other people, certainly within the family of Christ. We should be moved by compassion. We shouldn't, it's, it's compassion really that Paul pulls Jesus to this woman and makes him heal her. Cause he's like, woman, you've suffered for 18 years and you're a daughter of Abraham, you know, and I think sometimes as Christians, we need to be moved by compassion to the needs of others within the body of Christ. And that compassion is what really shows the presence of Jesus in our lives, isn't it? Like if we're moved to the fact, to the point where we're like, you know, grace trumps law, because effectively that's the message of the gospel. The law can't save you. Jesus can. Only grace can. You're saved by grace. And so that's what Jesus is doing here. Grace trumps law because these religious rulers, there's no way they could earn exactly. that grace. <laughs> exactly. In the uh, group chat, there were several ladies with us tonight, but Sharon asked a brilliant question. Why would people... Uh, be considered outcast if they had a disability. Well, there's even today in some Middle Eastern countries that if a baby is born with a disability um, or it's found as a, you know, as a, a toddler that is the, the baby the child's a disability, that they really are that they're literally put out in the backyard to be brought up with the dogs. Mm. and they're not looked after very well mm. uh and it's sad it, it 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 really is and esther says invisible disabilities not given help outside disabilities can only be cured by faith as it's on scene mm -hmm. well said my dear and lovely negums in the chat with them ah lovely lovely to have you join us 
Yes. Go. It is. Um, this 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 study guide makes a very 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 important point. It says, "Let's be careful, lest we become so righteous that we no longer care for sinners." Um, that's actually a, a good point because so far we've spoken about those within the body because this woman was obviously in the synagogue, but the same really applies to those outside the body of Christ. We should be moved to compassion Big time. Big for time. them. Mm -hmm. And I love that bit too at the very top where it said, you know, uh, on the start of page 39, or 38, you know, uh, the sufferer was a woman, a human being. Mm. Yeah, you know, I like. The Why way do that you think they had to make that point? Because again, women in those days were second-class citizens. They were property, really, weren't they? Right. And again, it's like a lot of Middle Eastern mm. places today still too that women are treated fairly badly. Um, but yeah, was a woman a human being? That's powerful. Those, those four points here, was a woman a human being, was a daughter mm. of Abraham, mm. an object of God's love, was a victim of Satan who hates humankind, had mm. suffered for 18 long years. They're four powerful points. They really are. Yeah. They but are, you, aren't they? But as you say, you know, even today, a lot of believers have really become desensitized to other people's needs around them. Mm -hmm. I think they're, I think they're caught up so much in what's going on in their own little bubble mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. friends, work colleagues, things like that, that they're not really seeing the bigger picture of the, of yes. the of, of other people around. And that's sad to go through life like that, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because there's a lovely, 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 um, and in our study guiding page 301, it makes a really interesting um, comparison. So I'll just read this out. It says, a third incident in Luke shows a similar pattern. Jesus was teaching in a synagogue one Sabbath, and there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years, and she was bent over. Jesus laid hands on the woman and immediately she was healed and stood up straight. Um, and then it carries on saying the rest of the passage. But then at the bottom, it, it compares obviously the ruler and the woman. So status, it says the man was a spiritual leader a member, and the woman was a member of the congregation. Um, the man was a figure of authority. The woman was a victim. The man was healthy. The woman was um, unhealthy. Jesus rebuked the man, even though he was a ruler and obviously highly esteemed by those around him. Um, but the woman who was considered lowly and humble, he restored her to, you know, her to her rightful glory. Um, Jesus condemned the man who had obviously placed himself as righteous and was looked upon as a ruler. Jesus condemned him. But Jesus affirms the woman and restored her by grace. Um, and the ruler was put to shame, but the victim who was humble became a cause for rejoicing. Um, and he says, here we see a high status man contrasted with a low status woman. And this man was a respected religious leader. He saw himself as an authority on God's law, yet his behavior showed that he cared less for a crippled woman in his synagogue than for his farm animals. In contrast, Jesus saw the woman as a daughter of Abraham, a valued member of God's covenant community. He acted immediately to free her from bondage and to restore her to complete health and wholeness. The result of the miraculous healing is that the ruler of the synagogue was shown as a hypocrite and the restored woman became a cause for rejoicing um, without in any way challenging the historicity of the event recorded, we can sense a powerful symbolic message. Christ has come to release women from the bondage caused by the fall. The restoration of the woman is a cause for rejoicing for all. Um, but it's interesting that <laughs> the, the person who 
humbles themselves and sees their need for healing and forgiveness is the one that ends up, quote and unquote, the hero of the story, because the hero really is Jesus. But it's interesting that the person who is lowly and humble and the victim and sees their need for grace and healing is actually the person that ends up being the cause for rejoicing. Whereas in contrast, the person who is all uppity and prideful and thinks they've got it all sorted and um, saying all the right things, doing all the right things, doing all the ceremonies, feeling like that, you know, they can earn their way into that. They end up being put to shame. That's literally mm -hmm. the words in Big this time. passage. And that's just, that's a revelation, isn't it? Because I hadn't quite obviously seen the comparison and and the comparison between the comparing and the contrasting. But yeah, what do you think? What do you make of this? Other than powerful. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, it's another woman. Yes. You know, a woman. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes okay i know jesus healed men he did heal of course men he did. but 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 it's another mm. woman mm. pardon me and she praised god in a synagogue and jesus didn't stop her no he jesus her. yeah jesus didn't say you're a woman this is a synagogue you sit down you be mm. quiet you should be seen and not heard Oh, so hallelujah to that. Um, and it just shows you that in Jesus' ministry, the number of women that are involved in Jesus' ministry. It's powerful, isn't it? Isn't it just? This book is a wee gem, isn't it? It is. It is just. Yeah. It I is give, just. I give thanks to my stepdaughter. My stepdaughter gifted me this book back in, it would have been 2009 for a Christmas present. Mm -hmm. and I tell you I just really love this book I really do. we give thanks for her as well because it's just it's powerful um and you know verse 17 says when he said this all his opponents were humiliated yes and humiliated that's, not that's, humbled humiliated no, there's, just, yeah. there's a difference there's a difference yeah. all difference. his opponents were humiliated but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Yes. And let's just be careful that we're not his opponent, lest we be humiliated. Because yeah. that's a real outcome for those that consider themselves high and mighty and lofty. Um, if they are Jesus' opponents and they don't repent, they might very well end up humiliated mm -hmm. and let's be let's be humble like this woman and see our needs for healing healing of our souls healing from sin um because ultimately that's the healing that we all need oh big time big time and we've when we we've, we've talked about hum being humbled and esther Mm -hmm. uh she wants to know and remember he esther's from hungary so okay. she's speaking in english and she's you know it, it, it translating is a bit into yes, hungarian uh, uh, the, the, the <laughs> no part. that's fine yeah. so she's asked a question what does it mean exactly being humbled as a christian i think that's a brilliant question do you want to answer that one so don't i i think it means accepting that you need Jesus mm -hmm. and not just from a head space because we all know that we're imperfect and if even if you ask the person on the street they'll be like oh you know no one's perfect um and some people say it as a head knowledge but I think knowing in your heart that you really are imperfect and 
not just that you're imperfect, but that your heart is actually wicked. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you can be restored to communion with God, which is essentially how God first designed it in the Garden of Eden for man to be in communion with him, the only way that we can be in communion with a holy God is through the price Jesus paid, is by being washed in the blood of Jesus and being presented unblemished um, before a holy God. And so accepting, I think, being humble enough in your heart to accept that you need Jesus. Like you, like you know that without him, like there's no way out literally to put it plainly just knowing that and I think that's a humility of hearts because when you accept not just your fallibility or your imperfections but the fact that you're also evil and wicked by nature mm -hmm. then you know that the only way you can approach a holy God is by exchanging and getting Christ's righteousness and Christ's holy record. And only when you really appreciate that, do you really then become humble to know you can't save yourself. You can't help yourself. And I think that's like the humility that we're talking about here, because when you're humble, then you give other people grace because you know that you, you need it. That's it, exactly. And I, I agree with everything you've said. And as well as when everything that's happened to you, all your blessings and everything, give God all the glory. Mm, that's for sure. Yeah, that that that's being humble as well because we can't do it ourselves. So our so our humility is realizing that without God, as you say, we're nothing. We can't do anything without God. So no matter what it happens, you know how crazy I am, and mm. you know, and, and I love cooking. I do love cooking, and okay and gonna blow my own trumpet i'm not a bad cook oh well, but, you go but every now and again you you make something and it's just hmm, that's just brilliant i go mm. thank you lord for giving me the ability to be able to do that mm. because i tell you i i believe it's a gift from him i really do and you know, oh, even the other day the my kitchen cupboards are long over a jew i cleaned and the other day i got them cleaned and uh the tops of them clean, the doors clean, the insides clean and all the rest of it. And I'm standing looking around the kitchen and thinking, that looks really nice. That should have been done a long mm. time ago. But thank you, Lord, for giving me the ability today to be able to do that. Mm. Because, because he strengthened my legs. I was able to walk up and down ladders, up five step ladders to get it all done and everything. So that yeah, was him all the glory. It was. Mm -hmm. So yes, things like that. You know, you do something well, you get your housework or something done on good good time. Thank you, Lord, for giving me the strength and the oomph to be able to do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, sure. Thanks. Now, I'm going to raise an interesting point that I have heard some preachers um, dwell on, which I don't particularly dwell on, but it'll be interesting to see, get your take on it. Um, so, we are, where are we? Luke 13. I'm just going to flip over to my Bible. So, Jesus sees this woman who was crippled by a spirit for 18 years. I know and I've heard certain pastors in certain circles make a big thing of the fact that this ailment was a spirit. Mm -hmm. And you know how I feel about people putting everything down to spirits. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> but I think, you know, we shouldn't possibly, I feel like we shouldn't rush past that point and we shouldn't oh. gloss okay. it over. I feel like that's something that we should perhaps expand on. So, and I know that you obviously have a, a healing ministry as well. So, Perhaps just expand on that for us. My Bible version says uh, in verse to do to do 16, mm. towards the end of 16, it says, you uh, what, 
uh, to free this woman from the bondage in which Satan had held her for 18 mm. years. I do feel sorry for Satan at times because he gets the blame of things he just didn't do. <laughs> Thank you. It, it really does. We have to own up to the fact that a lot of our problems in our lives are down to our stupidity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we might make yeah, yeah. we might make a bad financial decision. Mm -hmm. Um, wasn't Satan? It was you. Mm -hmm. Um, we might preach make a bad, it, sister. Yeah, preach we, it. We might make a bad decision about a relationship. I know. Like, will be cheering wherever she is at the minute. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, you. Know, even if it's just two girls to getting together, two, 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 two pals getting together for coffee and it develops into a really nice friendship. Mm. But if God doesn't want it, because he can see beyond what we can see, and he's trying to tell you, don't go down that path, but you ignore him and go down that path, mm. then you end up getting hurt either by, you know, I don't know, being stabbed in the back or something or whatever, or whatever, or whatever. You can't blame Satan. Because mm. you, you ignored God, but then again, there are times, and that, and it's not why God tells us in the Bible to compare the spirits. Yes, test every spirit test and them. pray for the gift of discernment. Big time, yeah, big time, big time. Yes. And when you've got the gift of discernment, and I believe everybody's got it. Mm. Um, because some people call it non-believers call it what that gut instinct or that mm. uh. uh uh, I can't remember the different terms they call it, but um, I believe everybody's got it. And uh, the truth about it is that when it kicks in, act on it. Mm -hmm. Don't push it to one side and don't blame poor old Satan and everything because <laughs> he's bad, but he's not that bad. He's really not. A lot of the problems. He's not, he's not worse. He's not as bad as God is good. Exactly. Exactly. That's well said, my dear. Yeah, thank you. I do I, have my moments. I they don't like have enough that ones, one. But when they do. <laughs> I like that one. And yeah, you're absolutely right because Satan will come and attack us. I like to refer to him as the enemy because as we know, Satan can only be in one place at one time, unlike God mm -hmm. who is omnipresent. Mm -hmm. So therefore, Satan has to have hundreds, trillions, gazillions of uh, foot soldiers and generals and things going out doing his job for him. And it's like Satan will come and attack you himself, but Jen is one of his foot soldiers. So mm. they're not called Satan. Uh, mm. And I don't like to call them little devils. So I just call them all the enemy. <laughs> you know, the enemy. Little, little baddies. <laughs> yeah, the, little minions. <laughs> uh, <laughs> That's funny. Little baddies. Yeah. The, um, yeah. But I also think that it's, it's important to maybe just that by the very nature of the world we live in at the moment there are there is evil in the world the sickness there's it's a fallen world it's a broken world and all of that is not God's design all of that is not God's goodness all of that is Satan's work and so sometimes when there's a spirit of sickness or infirmity, for example, that is attacking somebody or has someone in bondage, it's not necessarily because you've done anything to deserve it. Mm -hmm. It's just by virtue of the fact that we live in a fallen world. Exactly. It's exactly. not because you're so bad that you're being attacked. It's just because we're in a world where Satan is present and evil, the evil spirits, like you said, his minions are present. And so these spirits will attack us. You know, this woman, for example, had the spirit of infirmity. Um, and that's just a byproduct of where we are. Um, and so until Jesus comes to restore the world, um, sickness and death and cancer and bereavement and everything else are just 
byproducts of the world that we live in. Um, doesn't mean you're so bad that the enemy's picking on you. Um, and also, it doesn't mean that every time you pray, you will get healed. Exactly. And the spirits will be loose, like in this case. Exactly. Like a lot of our illnesses in the world today are down to our bad diet mm. and not looking after ourselves properly. And as you say, not everybody is going to be healed physically. No. But no. I, I do guarantee that everybody can be healed spiritually. Oh, for sure. You know, sure. And that, that's and why that, Jesus came. And that is a guarantee. That really is. That's or, why Jesus came, because, like nice. you say, it's a guarantee. It's it's our certain it's, hope. It's a guarantee. It, it really is. When you were talking about uh, Satan and the enemy and all the rest of there, it reminded me of a joke. Yeah. And it's it's quite a... I well, love it's, joke. It's, 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 it's a very thought-provoking joke. Anyway, this guy dies and he goes to heaven. Mm. And he, Peter lets him in the pearly gates and everything's fine for a while. He gets a wee bit bored. Mm. And it comes along to Peter and he says, hey, Peter, is there any chance of going down to hell for a couple of days to see what it's like down there? Peter says, yeah, no problem, dude. Way and down you go. The right. guy goes down, he has a brilliant old time, ball of a time. He comes back after a weekend. And Peter says, did you enjoy yourself? Yeah, yeah, it was absolutely brilliant. So it was. <laughs> So he's back in heaven again. And after a while, he gets aboard again. He goes back to Peter and he says, Peter, any chance to come back down again for a wee visit? I'm sure, where you go. So he goes down to hell and he's like, you know, living it up, the disco party and all the rest of it and everything. And he goes back and that's, he goes back to heaven and that's fine. And several months later, he says to Peter, is there any chance to come back down again for a wee visit? And Peter said, well, if you go, that's it. That's your last mm -hmm. time. You, you're not getting back into heaven. You know, it's, oh, that's fine. That's fine. It's, it's really very good down there. It's absolutely brilliant down there. That's fine. So he goes off down to hell. Mm -hmm. He gets down to hell. He's put into one of the horrible dungeons with pain and there's suffering. And there's that burning and he's in agony. And he cries out to mm -hmm. Satan. Oh, Satan, the first couple of times I came down here, it was all brilliant. Why are you doing this to me now? And Satan said, ah, the first two times you were a tourist, now you're a resident. Oh, isn't that thought provoking? Mm, it is, isn't it, Jas? Yes, it, re it really is. So Satan's power does until he gets you trapped, uh, until you can get out. You can't just can't get out. It all mm. looks good. It tastes good. It feels good. It smells good. It's everything good. But when he's got you in his clutches, that's when the real hell begins. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, wow. But yeah. it's been a wonderful conversation. Yes. I, I think so. I have. This woman has been illuminating in various ways. Um, I think our greatest takeaway here is I think God's grace should light up compassion in us for others yeah. because we have benefited from that grace we are beneficiaries of God's grace and so we should extend it to others we shouldn't be so clouded by our own religiousness and rule keeping that we are ignorant to the suffering and the need for other sinners to have healing spiritual healing especially um and it's just good for us to know that we can rely on God's grace amen and when we are we're free to glorify God Amen. Um, so yeah, that's been a wonderful conversation. Thank you, G. I thank you, um, my dear. Thank you. Shall we close out in prayer? Yes. Go ahead. Heavenly, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this woman, though one named in the Bible, but so many lessons to learn from her story. Thank you, Lord, that we're able to call out to you. And even when we're when we're not able to call out to you because we are crippled backwards from the aches and storms of life. Thank you, Lord, because you know our needs and you reach out for us even before we call out to you, just like you did for this woman. And you saw her need. She didn't even need to call out to you and you reached out to her and you healed her. Thank you, Lord, because you are a wonderful, compassionate saviour who is moved by compassion by the needs of your people. And you're always there to heal us and restore us to yourselves. 
Help us, Lord, to be people that are humble enough to um, recognize our need for you and our need for your grace, especially your saving grace. Thank you for a wonderful conversation, Lord. We lift Ngum and her family up to you, Lord. Lord, that um, you will, in the same way you were moved to compassion um, for this woman, Lord, that you would be moved to compassion for her family and comfort them at what is a very difficult time. Comfort all of them and draw near to them, Lord, so that they may feel you at this difficult time. Um, Lord, we ask that at the end of it all, we would all be able to glorify your name like this woman did in the bible because all glory and honor is yours in jesus name amen amen that was good yes. everybody in facebook good, good night. night everyone and we had of course we had sharon with us and with esther with us and with another beautiful lady with us antonia and oh. with naum so thank you ladies for coming and thank good you night. lovely ladies good, yeah good night to you let me see, I got that one closed down. There we go. And everybody else in playback land will watch this later on. Night night. You want to talk with us? The web addresses will be in the descriptions for both our ministries. Mm -hmm. Get in touch with us. Okay, we'd love sure. to chat with you. Okay. Good night, folks. <laughs>